Hey there, sixth graders, and welcome to week six, lesson one. This is our last official week of the instruction process for those of you that are um, pretty much ready to graduate anyway. And uh, we're going to follow our tradition with spelling. Uh, you guys have been doing a great job. And after looking at the spelling book, this is probably about the last one that isn't get too specific uh, for a language type of categories. This is just kind of a general commonly misspelled words. It'll be a good one for all of us. Uh, Mrs. Jones included in case these are challenging for her. But of course we're going to get started on the right foot as we always do and in that is in our Lord's word and prayer. So today let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep his promise. That's from Hebrews 10.23. And yes, that um, rainbow is there very intentionally because the word promise. Hmm, think back, sixth graders, when do you remember or what do you remember about the first rainbow? It came with a promise. In fact, it was a symbol, the correct symbol of a rainbow. It gets used differently nowadays, but this is a correct symbol, is God's promise. When Noah and his family got in that ark and it rained and it rained and it rained for 40 days and nights, flooding the entire world. And then finally it all dried up. And then God sent this symbol to Noah and his family, this rainbow, this beautiful thing that we get to see in prisons and in reflection of water and after rain, things like that, as a reminder of his promise to never cause that kind of devastation um, by flooding the world again. But he had allowed it, now, hadn't he? In fact, he caused the rains to come. Hmm, why? I mean, people always ask, you know, why does you know, God let bad things happen to good people? Well, <laughs> the people weren't so good, first of all. If you recall the full story in Noah's time, they were just living a terribly sinful life, totally fallen away from the Lord, having nothing to do with him and uh, all of his promises. And it saddened God's heart greatly. Uh, the creation he had made had completely rebelled, and uh, but for Noah... He was going to wipe out, you know, humanity, you know, start over kind of a thing. And he instead saw this faithful man and allowed him to bring his family onto this ark and save parts of his creation. And good came out of that. And here we are today. So remember that in this time period, especially God does use tragedy and events like this for our own good. Think of the Israelites. His chosen people. He allowed to be taken off into captivity. Why? Because they were starting to follow after false gods, jeopardizing their eternal life. Again, way more important than a temporal decision or a temporal thing, meaning temporary on this earthly plane. Their immortal souls were in danger. And it worked because sure enough, being in captivity made them repent and get on their knees and be in the word of God and have their eternal life restored. So that is very important. So again, whether we can pinpoint what the point was or not, we know that God does work all things to his glory. So we can, again, hold tight without wavering in the hope we affirm. That's the hope in our Lord, because God, again, can be trusted to keep his promises. He cannot lie. People think, oh, God can do anything. Nope. Nope. I would always tease my Sunday schoolers. Nope. We can't do everything. What? He can't lie. He can't go back on his word. That's the beauty of it. He is faithful and just and uh, will carry out his word. So hold on to that, guys. And on that note, let us pray to our Lord, who does indeed hear us and grant all. Almighty and merciful God, we most humbly and heartily thank your divine majesty for your loving kindness and tender mercies, that you hear our humble prayers and graciously grant us deliverance from our troubles daily and provide us for all we need for this life. We pray to you to continue granting your help and grace that we may lead lives pleasing to you, that we may continually offer to you a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Therefore, hear these prayers we bring before you for this pandemic to come to a swift close and for the people who have contracted the coronavirus to get better, including Parker's mom's friend and Tristan's mom's friend. For all those who are at greater risk of exposure to COVID-19 to be protected, including Gatlin's mom, Cooper's dad, Tristan's dad, Jada's dad, Zuriel's dad, 
Kendall's dad, JB's mom, and his cousins. For people in hospitals or nursing homes who cannot have their families visit them, be there for them, dear Lord. For our families to be loving and supportive of one another, not picking on one another. For those who suffer from allergies, like Luke and Mr. Jones, may they be relieved of their affliction. For any experiencing pain and other affliction, like Elena's mom, Caroline's dad, Tristan's grandpa, and Hunter's grandparents, may they also be relieved. For all we lift up in our hearts, like Isaac. For JC's dog, who is old and near death, may she not suffer and pass peacefully. And finally, for strength, compassion, and patience throughout this adversity, causing us to grow further in the grace and knowledge that will indeed serve us throughout our lives. Important stuff. And Lord, giver of all, you also deserve our thanks and praise for the healing of Andrew's grandparents and for continuing to provide all we need. All this we ask in thy most holy and blessed name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever. Amen. All right, so is that our tradition on Mondays, the first lesson of the week, is to delve into a new spelling unit, which is lesson 31. We're skipping 30 because it's one of those all last five units or lessons of words, so we're going to skip that. And this is on page 121 if you want to follow along in your book, or you can pull up the list that I would have posted in Google Classroom for you. All right, first we have privilege. All right, do not get privilege and rights, or privileges and rights confused. A privilege is an honor, it's a pleasure. It's really usually a, a gift someone gives you, but it's definitely an honor and, a, and, a, and a, uh, an enjoyment, a pleasure that you have. It's not necessarily a right. I have the right to this or right to that. I think a lot of times we uh, get confused with privileges and rights, so don't be one of those. All right, uh, next one is definitely. And definitely means most assuredly. It's positively. We have certainty about something. Then we have sincerely. Well, sincerely means to do something with care and thought, uh, not, um, not uncaring. You, you actually doing it in a caring manner, like your parents are always hoping you apologize to your brother or sister sincerely, not like, oh, I'm sorry. But no, oh, I'm so sorry that I hurt your feelings or I did something, whatever it is, fill in the blank to cause you distress. A sincere apology. So sincerely is what we, uh, how we want you to go about those things. Next one is miniature. I can already think of some fun things I can post for our matching game uh, as well for miniature. I think of miniature dogs, you know, or toy poodles, things like that being a miniature. Or you've got your doll houses, your Barbie houses, your Fisher Price pe people houses are all miniature of an actual size house or whatnot. So miniature is very, very small, very tiny. Necessary, just the opposite of what we had last time is unnecessary, it was unneeded. So guess what? We get rid of that prefix un, which means not. Well, now we know it is needed. Necessary is needed. Just be careful of the spelling. These are, again, this unit or this lesson is about commonly misspelled words. There has to be two S's and only one C. That gets mixed up quite frequently. Grown-ups, too. Next one is separately. Separately is uh, divided in compartments or components. Uh, I know my son likes to eat this way, is separately, you know, he's got, I, I, I tend to not like my food touching, but not only does he have his food apart, but he eats one thing, and then next thing, and then next thing, he eats his food separately, and those are the compartments that he's kind of divided. Go figure, because that's his, his preference. All right, and the next one, oh, meticulous. Well, I know at least one of you know who's, who Monk is. Um, Mr. Monk is uh, on the TV series called Monk, a very uh, entertaining, uh, light-hearted entertainment. And uh, he is very meticulous because he is, I mean, I call myself OCD sometimes, but it's not diagnosed or anything. I'm just very particular. Um, but he is meticulous. I mean, down to, I mean, having everything face the same direction and, and whatnot. So it means to be extremely particular, at, you know, making sure all your I's are dotted, your T's are crossed, and then some. Next one, restaurant. I know we all know what that is. It's something that we don't get to go to very much right now, other than to drive up, pick it up, and go home. This pandemic is not allowing us to go to our favorite place, places. But it is sometimes a commonly misspelled word, so watch out that you've got that A-U in the middle of it, not at the end. Think of ant. 
a restaurant for ants, A-N-T is the end of it. I don't know if that'll help or not, but again, that's the spelling. So of course, it's an eatery, it's a food establishment. Next one is conscientious. Conscientious is definitely one that gets misspelled. Something Sometimes people get it mixed up with conscious. This is conscientious. This is doing something um, or being a certain way. Um, again, doing something carefully with thought in a, in a, again, particular way, not quite the same as meticulous, but in the sense that it's you're putting care and thought into what you're doing, not just kind of, you know, blowing through something real fast and, and being kind of indifferent about it, but you're putting a lot of thought into it. Okay, next one is embarrassed. And yes, two R's, two, a, two S's. Don't forget that. That's one of the reasons it's a commonly misspelled word. So two R's and two S's. And this, of course, is some kind of humiliation. Just one of those moments that you'd rather forget. Just know that you'll get through it. Been there, done that. I know everything thing seems at the middle school and high school levels. It's the end of the world. It's not. Trust me. Been there, done that. It gets better. Think people forget. You forget. You move on. All right, so embarrassed, you know, a humiliation of some sort. Next one is we have perseverance. Perseverance is a quality, a character quality I hope you all have. And if you don't now, I hope you develop it so that you can have that stick to that what takes, um, what it takes to get, excuse me, a job done, a job done well as you stick to it. You're after it, you try again. If you don't get it right the first time, you try again, you persevere through it, perseverance. Uh, next one is congratulations. I know what you know what those, that word means to you. I'm always saying congratulations when you earn a uh, Jones Jewel in our Spelling Jeopardy or our matching game or when uh, you volunteer for uh, various questions and our practices and things in grammar. But uh, again, congratulations is when you're giving someone praise for what they've either achieved or what they've been gifted with or something like that. You're acknowledging that with a hearty congratulations. Next, we have divot. Divot is something you might not be used to. It's not a hard word, but it's an unusual one for you, unless you're golfers, perhaps. Sometimes you're not supposed to, but you might cause a divot in the grass, because if you're hitting with your golf club and you go too deep, instead of hitting the ball, you're hitting the grass and getting a chunk of the dirt and the grass, that's a divot. I think they do that intentionally, not with a golf club, but with the uh, their shoes and to aerate the, the field for um, a polo, you know, with the horses and the things that look like croquet mallets. I don't know much about that particular sport, but I think I've seen them do it. They go onto the field and they're supposed to kind of help uh, walk out there and do something, or maybe put the divots back. That's what it is. I think I'm remembering right. They have to help push them down for the next round of that game or what have you. But anyway, that's all it is. It's a clump of grass and dirt together. All right, torque, and this is where it's good to have the visual of me. You know, maybe not wanting to listen, watch me completely, but this is a good one for it because it's visual. If I have a jar of peanut butter or pickles or, ooh, bowl, yeah, remember, Mrs. Jones likes peanut butter or pickle, slightly toasted on sourdough bread. Don't scoff unless you try it. Anyway, dill pickles, of course. But if I'm putting the lids back on, I'm doing this to it. I'm twisting, I'm turning, I'm putting torque on it okay that's what torque is the twisting tightening action all right the next one would be more apropos visually if i had my metal rimmed glasses which i don't i have my plastic rim glasses on but i have titanium metal metal glasses the reason is titanium which is your spelling word is because it's a metal it's a strong metal but it's lightweight for those of you that wear glasses like this is jones Having very heavy, clumpy, you know, yucky glasses is not going to be fun. Bridge your nose hurt, your ears start hurting. It's very important to have a comfortable fit. And uh, this is a lightweight metal, but yet strong, which you also need for glasses, as those of you that wear them know. So titanium. Next, we have hazards. Hazards, plural, remember, it's going to be various kinds of dangers. It could be a chemical spill. There's hazards, you know, you don't go over there because of the hazards of various chemical spills, or it could be a fire, or it could be a knockdown uh, telephone pole, or two or three, because there's multiple hazards because of the live wire that's, you know, flip-flopping around like you've seen in some of our uh, television drama series. So that are ha hazards or dangers. Next one is accuracy, two C's, only one R. All right, so accuracy is again to, um, to have something. Accuracy is the noun, whereas what would, you, what would we say? The meticulous is the adjective. 
So um, a meticulous person has great accuracy, typically. I mean, we're, we're talking about throwing something, you know, like a, a bullseye, maybe not, but accuracy and other things as far as being uh, correct, uh, accurate is the root word there, uh, being precise and whatnot. All right, so it depends on how you're using accuracy. The next one is tra trajectory. I can't even say it, trajectory, which I thought was funny because we just had projectile. Well, not that I'm giving you permission to do this at home or in the classroom, but if you were throwing a projectile, so the thing, like we talked about in our, one of our last lessons, that path it's taking from being released from your hand to wherever it lands, hopefully not the back of your brother or sister's head, that projectile is going through the trajectory, the pathway, that path is the, the, tra it's the, the projectile's trajectory. It's the path it's taking from your hand to wherever it lands. And again, not at someone's head. All right, so next one is maintenance. This means uh, upkeep of something. All right, you want to have good maintenance of things so that uh, they last longer. This is a good policy to stick with. And uh, if you have run a business, a lot of times people come in and they can see if there's good maintenance or not. I actually had a student, an adult student, that would own his own uh, pest control company. And he said, if you ever want to know um, if you should stay at a restaurant or not, because again, he was in there, if you go to with the bathroom and you see even one bug, you need to leave. He says, being again in the pest control, control agency, he says, if you see one in the bathroom, showing that the maintenance of the cosmetic side or the, the showy customer side of the restaurant has even one bug, you don't want to see what's in the kitchen. That was his motto. So I thought, oh, I've always taken that to heart <laughs> if I ever have a question. So again, maintenance. You want to have good maintenance, so you have a good business. Next is dignify. So we have two. I'm going to go over them both at the same time because they're so closely related. You have dignify and dignity. Dignify is the verb and dignity is the quality, okay? So something you have, you know, I have dignity. Um, the dignify is it's to give honor, okay? To make something worthy, to make something honored. Whereas dignity is to be worthy or to be honored or something like that. So again, you can see how there's two forms of the same word. So dignify being the verb, dignity being the quality. All right, so next, again, two that are hand in hand, sociable and society. All right, so society is the thing, you know, it's a group of people, it's a gathering, you know, uh, being around one another, which we can't do right now. We have to keep our social distancing. <laughs> so it's hard to have society other than our family. Right now, your family is your society, that they are your world. Um, but, and on that note, you should be sociable with them, not anti-sociable, but sociable. Again, that means engaging, interacting. Um, it, can be, it can be equivalent to, going in that kind of uh, socializing realm. So there you have it, your spelling words. Be familiar with them. Hopefully this helps you both on today's Zoom session where we'll do another game of that matching, which I think you guys enjoy, where I find pictures on the internet to depict your spelling words. You got to kind of get inside my head, think the way I'm thinking. Some of them are pretty close. Um, but anyway, you can do that. And then also for our Wednesday Jeopardy game to prepare you for the actual spelling quiz. So you need to know, of course, your spelling of the words. And these are known as commonly misplaced, misspelled words, rather, not misplaced. And uh, speed, of course, you got to be able to type it in very quickly, not for your quiz, but for the spelling Jeopardy. And also knowing what they are. Because again, that's part of your quiz is that knowing uh, what the word is. Eventually, you have to know if it's a noun, a verb, a sub, you know, a, a adjective, an adverb. That'll be next year and in eighth grade. You'll have the vocab books, and they're a little bit more complex. Um, but you learn more too that way, so it's a good thing. <laughs> all right, that's all I know for now. I'll see you in Zoom for a spelling matching game to uh, end the year because this will be our last uh, matching game. Anyway, take care, guys. Love y'all. Bye bye.